Now that we've got the on-off state change listener set up, if we're authenticated, we're always redirected back to the app component, which is where our chat will live. If we log this user value that we have access to within on off state changed, and we take a look at our console, we can see that it's an object which includes all of our user information for our currently authenticated user. And in developing the chat portion of our app, we're going to be creating a lot of components, many of which are going to need to access this user data. It'd be nice if we could execute a function with the name, for example, of set user. We pass in the user data and put all of that data on global state so any of our React components that want to make use of it can. To do this, we'll set up the state management system Redux within index.js and we'll import a few packages to set that up. We'll import the function create store from Redux. We'll import the provider component from React Redux as well as the function compose with dev tools in order to set up our Redux DevTools extension. Now, to create our global state, all we need to do is create a store variable, and this will store the return value from executing the create store function, and to that we need, just need to pass an empty function for now, as well as compose with DevTools and make sure to execute that function. To provide this global state, this global store, to all of our components, we'll use the provider component. We'll wrap our router with it. Provider will provide our global state to any component that wants to use it. And we'll pass that down using the store prop. We'll pass the store variable to it. Now that we've set that up, if we take a look at our browser, we can see our DevTools icon for Redux is now glowing green. If we go to the Redux DevTools extension within our console, we can see this interface which we'll use in order to interact with our global state. And currently it's empty because we haven't set up our state, any of the properties on state, or any of the actions that we'll be using to interact with state. But we'll begin by creating an actions folder within our source folder. And this will contain two files an index.js file as well as a types file and action types will be responsible for determining what type of change we want to make to our global state so within our types file we'll create our first type to be a variable called set user equal to the string of the same name set user we'll put this as a variable and export it since we're going to be using it in a number of files and the first place we'll use it is in this index.js file that we created in our actions folder We'll import all of the exports, all of the exported types from our types file as an object called action types. Then we'll create our first action, which will have the same name, set user, but written in the camel case syntax. And to this function, we'll pass in the user data that we'll be getting. And from our action, we want to return two things. First of all, the type. And the type we'll return is the type that we just created, the set user type on our action types object, and then a payload. So actions will also be responsible for passing the data that our state needs to be changed with. So on our payload object, we'll have one property of current user set to the user data that's passed into it. Now, in order to actually perform the change to state of setting the user, we're going to create functions called reducers and we'll do that within this reducers folder and create just an index.js file within it. Here we'll also need to import our action types from our actions folder in the types file. And the first reducer function that we'll create will be called user reducer because it will reduce all of the user related data. It'll take a state argument as well as the action that's coming in and within the body, we'll set up a switch statement where it will update state accordingly depending upon the type of action that's coming in as we set with that type variable. So in the case that this is a set user action, the type of set user, we're going to want to update state where we first take the current user data that's coming from 
action.payload.currentUser, the user data that we put on the current user property in our set user action. And we also want to set the property is loading to false, which we'll create on our state. And we also need to set up a default case in every reducer where if it doesn't match a given action type, all it's going to do is just return the state as it was. And to state, to this state parameter, we're going to set a default value of initial user state. So this is what our user state will look like without any changes. So we'll create this as an object just above our reducer where current user will be set to null and is loading will be set to true by default. Now we want our reducer functions to only operate on a certain part of state. For example, our user reducer should only modify our user property on the global state. So we'll create this variable called root reducer and we'll, it will use a function which will import from Redux called combine reducers and combine reducers will allow us to determine what property on global state a given reducer updates. So we'll include combine reducers and within the object that it takes we can determine that user reducer will be updating and put its state values on this user property. And now once we have that we can export default this root reducer variable and we'll replace our empty function within create store with root reducer to get our entire state object. And we'll make sure to import root reducer from the reducers folder. We'll save all of our files. And if we refresh our app, we take a look at our Redux Dev Tools and click on the state option, you can see we have this one property of user and on that property, current user property as well as is loading. So we successfully set up our first action, action type, and reducer. In order to set our user data on global state with the set user action, we'll need the connect function from React Redux. And as the name implies, connect will allow us to connect our Redux state and actions with a given React component. So we'll wrap root with connect to execute it. And in a set of parentheses before wrapping root, we'll have access to first the global state with the map state to props argument but we don't need any state, so we'll just pass in null. And then we have this map dispatch to props argument as the second argument. And this is where we'll get our actions. And all we need to do to get set user is to destructure it from the map dispatch to props object. So we'll destructure set user and we'll import set user from the index file of the actions folder. And what connect and map dispatch to props will do is it will take this set user action and put it on our props object of the component that we're wrapping with connect. So now set user will be on this dot props. So if we save our index file, when our page reloads, we'll execute the set user action and our current user property on the user object is updated to the value that we're getting from our on-off state changed listener.